everyone, I have a bit of a weird pastime. You see, I whisper to robots as if they're sentient creatures from my imagination. And what they reply back with always fascinates me. You see, their cameras show us imagery data from their perspective. Their energy and sensor data is logged just like a pulse. The robots can sense what we as humans cannot perceive. And what they whisper back to me always lets me understand so much more about the natural world all around us. I believe that robots belong serving humanity for nature because deploying robots into nature is where we can learn the most. And I've seen this with my own eyes. I've witnessed people and robots working together in ways that can help solve environmental problems and help us get climate change under control. This interaction between the people, robots, and our natural world really shows the collaborative nature of this dynamic. To start, there's a mission, and it's always brimming with excitement. Can the robot reach this location that might be unreachable? What will the robot bring back? And of course, hope it's gonna work fits in there too. All right, it's time to start the mission. First, the robot ventures out onto the beach. It's navigating autonomously within its zone set by markers, searching for its treasure. Next thing you know, word gets out about a robot on the loose. Somehow, an organized line of energetic children forms on the beach because they want to take turns controlling the robot. Now, the robot is operating in manual mode by the volunteers. They are controlling its actuated arm to grasp the garbage and then place it into the container. Candy wrapper, 10 points. Plastic, 20 points. Cigarette butts, 30 points. Fake teeth, 100 points. You see, this is the first step. Involvement. These kids are having fun cleaning up garbage. Garbage that otherwise would have entered or re-entered our waterways and then caused further harm to our ecosystems. So wait a sec. What exactly is happening here? Usually, the garbage goes unnoticed. And I wonder, did they have that much fun last time they were cleaning up their room or doing the dishes? You see, the robot is providing a conduit. It gives the problem a new interface. Now we've given some value to something that is considered to have no value. It's more than just garbage. This involves imagination, strategy, and points. While this is fun in nature, it points to a pervasive problem we are facing about pollution on our shorelines. We are finding plastic almost everywhere, including the Arctic, and ranging in sizes that can harm ecosystems. For example, on Lake Ontario, I saw a long trail of plastic down the coastline. I also saw a frog pond that was speckled with hundreds of these tiny plastic nurdles. Plastic nurdles are the plastic pellets which are used to make products. When these individual cases are added up, we see just how widespread of a problem this can be. Well. This is great and all as a first step for one beach, but what does it tell us about the bigger crises we face, such as climate change, the decline in biodiversity, and the pandemic? The shift to remote learning and working that we are all experiencing right now has created stronger connections. Two teammates and I from Nigeria and Venezuela worked together for three months to develop a prototype for reducing ghost gear entanglements. Ghost gear is what gets left behind when fishers accidentally lose their nets. The process of prototyping 
was so exciting. My 3D printer was buzzing, printing pieces almost constantly, receiving code from Nigeria in the morning, collaborating on the electronics with Venezuela in the afternoon, hopping from the printer back to the computer desk while being careful not to step on all the parts that are all over the floor, both working and not working. My tiny room suddenly became this portal, a portal to a shared future that we were creating. It was such a beautiful chaos. What we came up with fits inside of a ubiquitous water bottle and using off-the-shelf parts. Imagine people from all over being able to replicate and deploy this wherever they are. In the North Atlantic, the need for this stems from the rising temperature of the oceans, which causes the lobsters to move, to move further out from shore. As they do so, they become nearby the migration corridor of whales. These majestic creatures, the North Atlantic right whales, they've been seeing their species population decline. One of the major culprits is indeed entanglement with ghost gear. It gets caught on their fins and slows them down as they are swimming. Sometimes the ghost gear continues to catch fish too. It's a large biodiversity issue. These snapshots of the problems, they're all connected because they're local snapshots of a bigger global crisis. People People like you and me can solve this. We can recognize problems and take personal ownership by joining a project. Or if a project doesn't exist yet, then by starting one. There's always ways to collaborate together and form a community. The root of projects begins with imagination and manifests in practical action. Just like the robot that you saw at the beginning, Bowie, it sprang into my imagination after seeing the problem firsthand and wanting to solve it. I imagined these swarms of robots working in teams to harvest and recycle plastic. The action of prototyping, testing, and iterating is what made progress towards this becoming reality. These times dare us to be imaginative, as it is the one universal superpower that we all have to bring about a better future. As the inventor Buckminster Fuller puts it, we are called to be architects of the future, not its victims. If we do this properly, perhaps we will get to hear the praise that the robots will whisper back to us. Thank you.